Hello everyone, it's Paul with TutorU, and today we're going to be going over line graphs, bar graphs, and scatter plots. I hope this helps you study for the GED, and if it does, make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe, because all of those things help me get this information out there to more people that could use the help. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, enjoy the video, take your time, and study hard. For this first graph, we have what's called a scatter plot. What scatter plots are used for is to show a relationship between two different types of data. In this one, we have hours and percent correct. So this is study time for the GED math test. If you look up there, it has the title. When you look at these graphs, you always want to read the titles and different labels. So what we have is study time for GED math test, percent correct, and oop, over there, the hours. And as you can tell, there is what is called a correlation. So a correlation is the definition of a relationship between two different types of data. What this is showing is a positive correlation. It's moving up from left to right. What you'll most likely run into on the GED when you're looking at any type of graph are questions in regards to like in this one, they're going to ask you, how many hours do you have to study to get a certain type of score? So let's just kind of go through that. How many hours would you have to study to score an 80%? Let's circle the area right around that 80% mark where most of the scatter points are at. So if we look over here, we have the 80% and everything seems to be circulating right around this. We have the most data points in this area around 80% and it looks like I look down at the number of hours and it looks like we need to study for six hours to score an 80%. If I ask you how many hours do you have to study for the GED math test to score a 90%, you go ahead and you look at the 90% mark the 90% line and you follow it over and it looks like we have we have three different data points but it looks like the ones that will guarantee us or nearly guarantee us uh, a 90% would be this zone right here and that is at nine hours of study so if you want to score a 90% you're gonna have to score study for nine hours scatter plots are pretty nice it's a really nice tool to show trend lines. And like I said, positive correlation that is moving up from left to right. That is a positive relationship between percent correct on a test and number of hours studied. Now we're moving on to the next type of graph, and this is what's called a line graph. Line graphs typically show a relationship between some data point and time. In this example, we have our dates or our months of the year, and up here we have inches of rainfall. When we look at the title of this graph, it says monthly rainfall in two state parks. So what we're going to be doing is comparing the rainfall between two, maybe national, yeah, no, not national, it says state parks, that's why I read it. However, we can look at it and we see that there is two, there are two different colored lines, each one represents a park that they are measuring the rainfall in. The blue line is Park A and the orange line is Park B. And it goes over the course of six months. Another thing to make a note on is with line graphs, you can have multiple entries of data. So here we have two state parks, but we could have three, four, five different state parks, or we can compare all of the national parks in a line graph. That's why they're so useful, is that you can compare multiple entries to each other. In what month is the biggest difference in rainfall between these two state parks? This is the type of question that you're going to get on the GED. So when we're looking at here, over there, right? It looks like, it looks like April, it looks like April has the biggest gap. And we can tell by, you know, if you don't get those lines in between, you can draw them in between. It just looks to me that April is the biggest gap in rainfall between the two state parks. What month has the smallest gap in rainfall between the two state parks? Well, it looks like May. So 
let's move on to our last example of a type of graph that you might see on the GED. Here we have what's called a bar graph. A bar graph is another tool used to compare two different types of data. And here, in this example, we are comparing contestants along with the distance that they have in the long jump competition. As you notice, there are different colors representing the different contestants, and they stretch across the graph representing how far they did their long jump. Always, always read your title and your different labels when you're studying for the GED and when you're taking the test. Now, I'm going to read off a few questions that you might find on the GED test. And this goes as far as your social studies test or math test. So for my first question, go ahead and pause after I say this. Uh, then take a look at this graph and see if you can tell. So what contestant jumped exactly half as far as the contestant winner? Go ahead and pause the video now. All right. So, the contestant that jumped exactly as half as far as the contestant winner, well, here is the winner right here. They jumped the farthest out of everybody. And the person that jumped exactly half as far as them is this person, contestant A. So we'll put a circle, or you know what? They get a star. We'll put a star on contestant A's bar graph. For our next question, it is, Katie and Elena jumped the exact same distance. Put a mark on the bar graph of the two contestants, Katie and Elena. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, so that would be, all you have to do is just take a look at the bar graph and find out, or take a look here, see? We have this person right here and this person right here. They jumped exactly 15, we'll assume feet, unless you are Superman. And that's how we know that this is Katie and Elena. Another type of question you'll find on the GED is just proving that you're reading the question thoroughly. And that question will be something like, put an X on the contestant that disproves the statement that no one jumped farther than 15 feet. So, pause the video. Okay, this one is pretty obvious. Well, there are two contestants that jumped farther than 15 feet, and that is the blue contestant, contestant, oh, I suppose I didn't read it properly, I didn't put an X, so we'll put an X right here. Contestant G jumped farther than 15 feet, and contestant D jumped farther than 15 feet. However, I'm not going to put an X on the yellow bar or this tan bar, because they didn't jump farther than 15 feet, they just landed right on it. So, we put our marks down here and here, that answer for that question is now complete, and we'll move on to the next question. Another way they're going to test your knowledge is to use different vocabulary words inside of the question. So for an example like that, I'll say something like, contestant C significantly improved his next long jump attempt. In fact, he tripled it. So go ahead and mark on the graph how far that contestant C has jumped now. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look and, you know, take a mental note of how far they would have jumped if we tripled contestant C's distance. And I will go ahead and I will mark it. Contestant C only jumped five feet. So if you tripled five feet, how far did you go? Well, you have now successfully long jumped. You have successfully long jumped all the way out to 15 feet. So you are now tied, you are now tied with contestant E and contestant B. There we go. And the last question will be something like, contestant D significantly faulted on his next attempt, or on this attempt, and so he had to revert his distance back to the prior attempt's length of 17 feet. Go ahead and mark on the graph where 17 feet would be on contestant D's jump line. Well, it would be right in the middle. And the reason why I know that is this is 15 and this is 20 and 17 is roughly right about in the middle. I guess we could technically put it right in here and that would be okay. 
and so this distance would not count anymore after that question is asked. I hope all of this helps you study for the GED. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. I am going to start doing some live classes that I'll air at 9 a.m. Central Time. If you want some extra help, swing on by. If you need immediate assistance on different types of topics, check out my website, www.tutoru.mind. I can be your personal tutor. Otherwise, I hope you have a beautiful day and I appreciate you watching my video.